tonight. Thank you for this time of fellowship that we've had so far. Father, we want to receive from you. We want to still hear your word. So, Spirit of God, we pray that you will speak and open the hearts and minds of your servants. Reveal something dear to your heart to us and cause us, O Lord, to become an image, an expression of your image, to become a picture of your personality that we might carry you into our generation, that we might be like you and we might be able to show the world who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, the aspect of leadership that I want to talk about today, yesterday, this morning we spoke about character in leadership. But this evening, I want to speak about something else that, you know, I've not really heard many people talk about this topic, really. I've not, I can't really believe, I don't really believe I've heard it preached before by, from anybody. But it's, it's a very common, it's like it's, it's an obvious part of leadership that we all know. But uh, I, I think it's important for us to talk about it. I just feel that's what God wants us to talk about today. I want to talk on the weak leader. The weak leader. Who is a weak leader? Now, normally we would talk about who is a leader, leadership qualities, and all that. But I think sometimes we should address the question of weakness in leadership. Who is the weak leader? Not just, this is different from weakness in leadership, but this is a weak leader, the weak leader. Who is the weak leader? I uh, will be reading uh, from uh, first, the book of uh, First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 10. Oh, chapter... Maybe we should start from chapter 13 first. Actually, I'm going to be, this, this, this lesson is, and this message is from uh, the whole of, from chapter 10 to chapter 28 of First Samuel. It's the story of uh, Saul, right? It's the story of Saul. So, uh, I want to use Saul as an example of the weak leader. But I will just give you, you know, we have spent, we are, uh, our time is short now. I will just give you very briefly, briefly, who is a weak leader? Number one. Weak leaders don't like to offend people. So, they don't like to say no. So, if you are the kind of leader that doesn't like to say no, If you are the kind of leader that doesn't like to tell people no, it means you are qualified as a weak leader. A weak leader doesn't like to confront. He doesn't want to offend people because you want to keep all the people in your church. And you want to keep all of them happy. So you are kind of uh, rubbing their head and trying to tell them, well, I'm not bad. Uh, well, you're not telling them black and white. You're not telling them the truth. And you are not letting them see where you are, your position. Well, that's a picture of a weak leader. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the trap that Saul fell into. That's the trap that Saul fell into. Because he couldn't tell the people the truth. And if, you know what happened? The people ended up manipulating him and controlling him. So he actually came under the control of the people instead of him leading the people. You know, in verse 11 of uh, chapter 13 of uh, Samuel. It says, And Samuel said, What art thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou cometh not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. So he was explaining why he, he didn't wait for, for the man of God. Now, 
verse chapter 15 chapter 15 and i'm just giving you selective places verse 24 and saul said unto simon i have sinned for i have transgressed the commandment of the lord and i was because i feared the people and obeyed their voice so he said of the people obeying the voice of the leader now the leader is obeying the voice of who of the people because he was intimidated so a weak leader is afraid intimidated by the people so who are you as a leader can you examine your position are you the kind of leader that does not like to tell the people the truth or you don't want to be you are so correct politically correct you know there are too many politically correct pastors and leaders just the same in politics you know people in politics and in in the pulpit are the same we we all face the same leadership challenges you know you could be so good or too good that you have lost your you, you lose your edge and if you cannot say no to people if you cannot tell people the truth what it is black and white you are a weak leader if you are afraid of offending people you are in trouble because they will control you eventually and when they control you they will make you to do the wrong things Number two, the, the second thing that I want us to know about the weak leader is that the weak leader tries to win people by promising more than they can actually deliver. Can you relate to that? Leaders come on TV, leaders come in church and promise and preach and, you know, we should be responsible to the word we preach. You know, sometimes we, tell, we say, well, my own duty is just to preach the word. I preach the word, let God be responsible to it. No, it's God will be responsible to the word only the, to the extent at which you are responsible to the word. God will be responsible to commit to the God will be committed to the word only to the extent you are committed to the word you are preaching. If you don't commit yourself to the word you are preaching, if you do, are not a doer of the word you are preaching, if you, don't, if you are not responsible to the word you are preaching, if you are telling people one thing and you don't really believe it and you are not, you are not going to follow it through, you are not going to follow it through, God is not going to follow it through either. God will not confirm your reputation if your re- reputation is not right. God is not going to confirm, though you are preaching his word, have you ever wondered why is it that the same word of God that is preached by one person is confirmed by God? God, is conf- God confirms that word. And that same word is preached by another person and God doesn't confirm it. So, what is it? Is the problem with the word of God? No, the problem is the, with the vessel. So, if you are just co- being irresponsible as a leader and you don't follow through on what you preach... You preach something, you promise people this, you tell them God will do this, you will do this, and you are not holding on to your word. You are not faithful to it. God will not be faithful to the word you preach. So, a weak, you know, you know so we, we leaders say a lot of things just to get the people. We leaders and pastors, we say a lot of things just to make the people come to us. You know, we are in trouble because the, the people will soon discover it. And, and, and then you, God. God's word will be so light into people. People will think, God, what this? the pastor is always talking and nothing ever happens. So, so, so we should be careful. It's a weak leader. It's a way that a weak leader tries to hold on to people. You, you try to promise them this, promise them that, and try to tell them that, oh, this will happen, this will happen. Just to, you think they forget, but they don't forget. <laughs> Some of them might forget, but most people don't forget. And you know what they do? They just go to another church. So, don't try... To tell the people the way it is. Tell the people the truth. Don't try to, you know, uh, exaggerate too much. And don't try to, you know, paint the picture that you cannot follow through. And it's a weak leader that does that. A weak leader will promise people more than he can deliver. More than he can deliver. More than he can deliver. And he will say, well, I believe God. I do it by faith. I hope, I expect you to believe God. <laughs> Those are just uh, excuses. Because God will not act on that kind of word. Because you are not committed. God will only be committed to your word and to the extent to which you are committed to it. Actually, we, are, we as a leader, we are worth only what we can deliver in reality. That is your worth. The only, what you can deliver is what you are worth. 
If you cannot deliver on what you're saying, only to the extent. If you preach 100%, if you say 200 words, and you can only deliver on 20%, 20% of that word, is only, that is who you are. That is your, that's what you deserve to have. You, God will only confirm 20%, the one that you, are, you can deliver on. That's what God will deliver on for you as well. Okay, let's go ahead. That's like Saul, you say. He, and like, like Saul, he told the man of God, I'm coming. Don't worry, I will wait for you. He never waited. Then God told him, go and destroy the Amalekites and destroy everything. How will do it? He never did it. Promise him more than you can de- deliver. Promise him more than you can deliver. Promise him more than you can deliver. It doesn't work like that. Your character, your life has to line up with what you're saying. Now, who is the weak leader? The weak leader don't set standards and then hold the people accountable to them because they don't want to lose people. You know, some leaders, they don't set up standards and hold people accountable to those standards. It has a weak leader. You are afraid of setting high standards. Or some people set too low standards. Like, for example, what I just said, that we tell our young people not to date. I tell you, that's a high standard. Especially when you are living in a perverse generation and a perverse society. And it's not an easy decision for me as a pastor to take. Because you have many churches in town that are ready to lower the standard. And for you to raise up that, then you could lose all the young people. They could go to the other churches. But I must, be, I must be so strong enough in God to believe that God will stand with me in that decision. Then I must be so strong in faith, in myself, in the, in the, in the rightness of the decision, that I must believe that, no, I believe in this, and I'm committed to this. I have my conviction. Let the, the higher the standard it's not, if the standard is high, it's not a disadvantage. If the standard is high and you are committed to it, you are not just doing legalistic stuff. You are not just being legalistic and uh, trying to just do some religious thing. And, but if the standard is high, people know. You know, people of high caliber, they attract high caliber people. But people of low caliber, they only attract lower kind of caliber kind of people. So your standard decides the kind of people you are attra- that, that, that attracted to you. So if you are if you are the kind of sweety sweety softy softy kind of leader, you only have those kind of shallow leader. I mean people around you. So but if you want to have quality people, have a have a high standard. But the weak leader, the weak leader is always lower in the standard. And it's just like, like Saul, you see. He didn't want to lose the people. Oh, the people started going away. That's why I had to lower the standard. Oh, the people started going away. That's, I, that, well, that's why I had to perform the sacrifice. Well, you're in trouble. If you just want to keep the people, if the people is your... Like, for example, I, don't, I tell my people all the time, I am, <laughs> I am working on getting rid of all of you. I am working on it every day. I, the, my goal is not to increase, the, make the people stay in church and sit down there all their lives until they die and I have to bury them. No, no. My goal is to get rid of them. Not get rid of them for them to go to other churches, but to get them, stand out of them pews and go and do something practical for God. I'm working on that. Just to make them get out. But if you are addicted to making people sit down, and you, you, are, you will compromise your stand. Like what we were talking about this morning, that so many immigrants coming from Africa, they come to this country, they are using false documents and pastors know about that. They are using false passport, the documents of other people. And you as a pastor, because you are so addicted to having people come to church and you are afraid if I tell him not to do it, he will just move to the other church and you don't want to lose him. And then, so you are lowering your standard. So, I mean, then you lose your authority with God. God doesn't respect you. And when you lose your authority with God, if God doesn't respect you, what was the what was the benefit of it? You having the church full of hundred thousand people, and God has lost respect to, his respect to you. So, like the people stayed with Saul, they stayed with Saul, 
But he lost his reputation with God. God rejected him. So, and when God has rejected him, uh, you, you know, the people soon will discover that the hand of God is not on you again. They also leave you. So, so it's not worth it trying to lower the standard and try in, in, and in trying to retain the people. So, that is what weak leaders do. They don't set a standard or they lower the standard and they don't demand accountability from people because they don't want to lose them. And you know the reason why people don't set standard, high standards is because they themselves don't have high standards in their lives. So that's a, that's, that's a quality of a weak leader. And, I, and I, I'm not talking about somebody else somewhere. I'm talking about you people sitting down. I'm talking about all of us. I want you to see yourself in one of these, in one of these points. If you see yourself in one of these points, just mark it out for yourself and begin to work on it. That's why we are here, just to help you uh, get, get rid of these things. The next point. I've mentioned it a little bit, but I will still uh, underline it. Weak leaders avoid confrontations. You know, I try to do that <laughs> when I was a younger pastor, I mean, when I was uh, an inexperienced pastor. I used to think that, uh, I used to think that, you know, actually I wanted to be good to everybody. <laughs> I wanted to have good reputation. And I was thinking that controversy is bad. And I used to think, I, I, you know, I'm a good person. I know I'm a good person. I, I don't want people to be thinking that I'm bad. Well, you know why you're thinking you're a good person? It's because you are, you are, you are, you are self-possessed. <laughs> you, are, you are full of yourself. You are in love with yourself. And anybody that is saying, well, I want them to think I'm good and I'm good. And I want people to know, to know. I don't want people to think I am bad. It's because you are not delivered yet. You need to die to yourself, first of all. And until you die to yourself, you don't get, regain yourself, your life. <laughs> and uh, so it was later on that I discovered that controversy is a mark of success. If you are not controversial, you are not successful yet. No, there is no successful person in life that is not controversial. That's why Jesus said... It woe unto you if everybody likes you. And, you know, because if you are successful, if you are doing anything right, some people will like you and some people will hate you. It's like in the nation where I'm coming from, in the Ukraine, I mean, half of the country love me and half of the country hate me with passion. And uh, those who love me also love me to death. And, but the one thing is, there is nobody that is indifferent about me. You know. There is nobody that is indifferent. <laughs> From the pres- president to the president, everybody res- they respond. You say. So, and because you've got to, you've got to go into confrontations in some of the issues. Because you know we are kingdom people, and as kingdom people, we have kingdom values. And what we are supposed to be doing with those values is to confront, to use the values of the kingdom to f- confront the values of this world and to subdue the values of this of this world and to change we are using we are uh, superimposing the values of the kingdom over the values of this world and, and we are enforcing and f- to, for those v- for the values of the kingdom to be acceptable and for that to happen that is confrontation we are enforcing the kingdom of god upon the earth we are enforcing the kingdom of God. We are enforcing the kingdom of God upon the earth. And that is confrontation right there. So you must be willing to confront. Like for example, uh, can you imagine in the country they said the, the state is separated from religion. And I said, well, you could be separated, but you can't. I refuse to live in a country where God is removed from the government. Of, you cannot remove God from the government. God created government. People, so all the pastors in the city, they are saying, Sunday, you don't go into politics. You, how do you, you don't go into politics. That is against what? This is against, this is, oh, 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 oh. you don't do politics. I am, I'm not even a citizen. I, okay, I will not go into politics. I'm not a politician, but I will raise up politicians from my church. So in our church, we have raised up, we have started three political parties just from my church. 
So, yeah. So in the last election, we had 600 people running from our church. And all the, they were winning, you know, seats in the seat. So now you have election going on right now here. Yeah? I wonder how many of your members are running. So how will you control the atmosphere of the country? How will you rule the nation if you are not even participating in it? We should deliver our people from the mentality, from the survival mentality. From just, just uh, uh, caring for their own needs and uh, minding their own business and just thinking of survival. We should deliver them from that survival mentality and raise them up to become deliverers of the land. So my people, my people, if you come to our church, it's not enough for you just to be a church member that is being prayed for, that is looking for miracles every, every time, that is looking for prosperity. No, you must get over that. That's that for kids. You must be able to take responsibility for the land you are living in. And that is confrontation. You see. But the, lead, the weak leader will not. The weak leader gives to people what they want to, 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 to have. But me, as a strong leader, I direct them to where they need to be. I don't tell them what they want to hear. I make them eat. Just like my wife. <laughs> She takes care of the kids and takes care of me as well. You know, I didn't eat like all those grains and salads and all those. I want the real stuff. I want the meat and the bread and the rice. And the... But she would say, no. The kids, and the kids wanted chocolate all the time. The kids wanted chocolate. And she would say, no, you don't eat chocolate. You eat salad. You eat these carrots. You and uh, the, the kids don't like it at all. But we know it's good for them, you see. If they don't eat real food, they only eat uh, sh- chocolate, you know, they will not be strong and they will be weak. The same thing for me. I didn't like other stuff. But, you know, in a, where I come from in Africa, if you eat too much salad, they say it's animals. Only animals eat leaves. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are not an animal. Well, you got to eat it, you see, because you want to be healthy. <laughs> so, some things you need to just, as a leader, you've got to make people do it, because that's what is right. <laughs> anyway, but weak leaders, they can't do that. They don't want, they avoid confrontations. That's a sign of weakness. It's not because, well, I love people. I know, you know, I love people. You are just hiding behind the word love, people. Yeah, yeah. Saul loved the people too much. He wanted to please them. You know what? how he ended? He ended losing the throne. Don't lose your spiritual edge because you are too, you are too good. The next point. Weak leaders are often discouraged by criticism or failure. Weak leaders are always discouraged by criticism or failure. Have you ever been criticized? <laughs> you know, I used to be bothered by that. I'll tell you the truth. Because can you imagine, I wake up in the morning and all the major newspapers, like the... New, what do you call it? New York Times, Washington Post, or USA Today. Yeah, everybody writing about you. And then everything is crazy, you know. And you're in the center of the country. Everything is horrible stuff. You feel like defending yourself, going to court. And so criticism used to really bother me, especially when they are on national uh, page, pages like that, newspapers. But you know, you know what? Now, I've, 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 I've learned to thrive on criticism. To thrive on criticism. To thrive on that. Don't be bothered by that. You see, if you are, don't be bothered about people backbiting you. You know what backbiting is? It means you are going in front. That's why they are biting your back. You, you know, and that's what you are dri- that's what you are striving for. You want to be the first. You want to be the head and not the, the tail. You want to be the first and not the last, isn't it? So God puts put you in front, and now you are complaining that people are back. back, back. So you want Him to put you at the back? 
So you are now going to be the one back biting another person. So it's good for them to bite your back. <laughs> rather than you being in the group of those who are biting the back of other person. So the, the, the reason is, anybody that's in leadership, if you are a real leader, it means you are leading. Leadership is leading. And if you are leading, it means some people are following you. So if some people are following you, then they are seeing your back. And they are seeing your fault. Can you imagine people following you? You are the only person they will discuss. So you are going in front because you are the only one they are seeing. So they are discussing you. If, so if you don't want them to discuss you, come onto the back. So criticism is a mark of success. So, thank God that you are the one they are discussing. <laughs> Rejoice. <laughs> and, also, and also, in some of the criticisms, you find some benefit for yourself. You can always find things to correct in what you're doing and some things to reconsider. And uh, so, uh, you know, and another thing is that always remember, the critics, there is nowhere you go in the world where... There are monuments or statues for critics. The critics are not history makers. So don't bother. The reason they are criticizing is because you are the history maker. You are the one doing it. There is always a group, two group, groups of people. The people who are doing, making things happen, the people who are making history, and the people who are criticizing them. So thank God that you are in the group of people being criticized. So next point. No, actually, don't let criticism bother you and don't let failure bother you either. Because the only people who, who don't fail are the people who never do anything. If you do anything at all, you will occasionally experience some failure. And you know what failure is? Failure is defined like this. Failure is a way of knowing how not to do it. So that next time, if I fail, if I try to go this way and I didn't come anywhere... Oh, thank God. Next time I will go this way. So, failure is just a way of knowing how not to do it. So that you know how to you try another way and find a better way of doing things. So, failure is not a tragedy. It's an advancement. <laughs> Actually, every success is built, is built on failures. You remember the Emerson? Or is it? The guy with the lamp? What was his name? Edison, Edison, Edison. Yeah, Edison. He tried 999 times and failed. Only on the hundred, a thousand times he made it. Because so he learned all these times how not to do it, how how, how not to do it, and he then got it the, the thousand times. So anyway, the next point: weak leaders are normally easily wounded. When there are no supports for them. Like there was, a, there was a question like that here today. Somebody was asking. What do you do to leaders who don't do what you tell them to do? And do you punish them? You know that question tells me something. It tells me about a weak leader. That is offended. That is angry. At the fact that his people are not supporting him. And you are, his reactional. When you become reactional. And when you become bitter at the people you are supposed to serve. And when you are angry at your own people, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. You are in trouble. You are in trouble. Nobody owns you anything, by the way. <laughs> and the fact that they come to your church, that doesn't mean that they must do anything. But your leadership traits, your leadership quality should persuade them to follow you. So leadership is an leadership is influence. Leadership is leading by example. So if you are really a leader, you will influence them. But if they don't want to do it, it means you are not effective yet. So don't be wounded. Even when people don't do what you want them to do, even when they disappoint you and let you down, don't be wounded. Don't let. Don't be offended. Don't be a wounded lion. Don't be a leader that is always walking in resentment in disillusionment, in some anger, in some 
wounds and always dissatisfied. If you are having that kind of spirit, if you are harboring that kind of spirit in you and still try to serve people, mm, it's not a good soil for, for, for th- things to thrive. You will not really be, you will not enjoy the ministry will suffer. You are wounding yourself and you are wounding, inflicting wounds on other people as well. Because when you are wounded, you, you actually pass across that wound to other people. And, and you actually destroy life. So you, and we are supposed to be builders of lives, you know. We are not supposed to be destroyers of, destroyers of life. So if, but if you serve in anger, in resentment, with wounds, you end up destroying more. You end up actually wounding more people than yourself. And no, it's not the kind of... Do everything, possible and impossible, to set yourself free from wounds and from bitterness and from grief. Just do anything possible and impossible. In fact, I have uh, a series of teaching. I was thinking of talking about it this week. Maybe it will, be, it will still be possible, I don't know, but it's called the wounded minister. The, cause, the causes of wounds to pastors and ministers, uh, what to do to be healed, healing wounded ministers, and, uh, and, and other things. Like that. There are three series of messages I have in that. Maybe we'll be able to touch it this week, I don't know. But uh, it's really necessary. We need to get set free from that. Don't allow bitterness to destroy your destiny. Okay. Who is a weak leader? Again. A weak leader is insecure. So, as a result, it does not release people to their territories and to their destinies. What does that mean? Weak leaders are afraid of letting people go. So, because it's insecure, is always controlling and holding people and always want you know to tell people what to do and it's not releasing people you know what i discover jesus statement is right whatever you are ready to lose that's what you retain but whatever you are afraid of losing that's actually what you lose that's when you lose it you know what i've come to the conclusion that i've come to i release all my people and they are all free to go. And in fact, I push them. I push them to go and do something else, to go to other churches. I, I chase them away. I, re- I, I do my best to make sure they go. But that's when I really retain them. Because I'm not holding on to them. <laughs> and they know uh, they cannot punish me by threatening me where we are going, we are living. They know I will not suffer from it. I was already asking them to go before they ever thought of going. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so uh, weak leaders are always insecure. And they are, they, are, they are always controlling people. They don't release people to their destinies. Don't be the kind of leader that, is, that your, your leaders have to come to you to beg you to let them go and start their own ministries. Be the kind of leader that is rather going to tell them to go and start their ministry before it even crosses their mind. Don't be the kind of leader that your people have to be saying, Pastor, please release me. Uh, God told me to do this. And, and you are saying, no, God has not told me. <laughs> no, me, God has not told me. So you have to stay. <laughs> you are a controlling freak. A controlling freak. You are not free. And if you are not free, you cannot bring liberty to other men. You can only export and transport bondage. Yes. You are not free. You have built around yourself the kingdom of slaves. But you see, in this in this in this in this kingdom, it is supposed to be a kingdom of sons. Everybody is supposed to be significant. So the big guy, you are not the king. He said, no, everybody is a king in this kingdom. It's supposed to be the kingdom of kings and priests. So all your people, they are the same like you. 
So in my church, I tell people, I'm not better than you. I'm just on my territory. And I'm here to help you discover your territory. To help you discover your destiny. To make sure you enter into your promised land. You know, so that's why I'm here for. I'm here to make you discover your purpose in life. So you are supposed to be a a door opener to your people, not a a door shutter. (laughs) So, 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 but weak leaders do those kind of things, you see. Weak leaders try to, you know, make things or be around about them. You know, I tell, I tell people, you know, uh, you know, as in this kingdom, you know, in, in Genesis, it says, have dominion over everything, but not over anybody, not over people. The only thing you are not allowed to have dominion on is over individuals, over human beings. You cannot. You can have dominion over everything, but not over people. Why? Because we are all kings and priests in this kingdom. It's a kingdom of kings. So the role of a pastor, the, the, the assignment of a pastor is to help all the kings discover themselves and to make them find the territories upon where they will reign and rule as kings as well. And don't be insecure that other people are discovering their territories and they are reigning. So that's why when people all want to come to me and carry my bag and do everything, you don't need to do that. You are a king as well. You can do it if you want, but don't do it because I am the big guy that you only for me. If you do it for me, then allow me also to serve you. Allow me to open the door for you as well. Allow me to also serve you too. You are a king as well in your own class. Only we all have our territories. This church, that's my territory where I reign. But your territory could be engineering or in computer industry or business or evangelism. Or, but you are a king as well. So my assignment as a pastor is to help you discover your territory and discover you and unveil you as king over that territory. You see. So it's a kingdom of kings, you see. But weak leaders will always yeah, limit people and control them and all that. All right, the next point, which is the final point, is uh, that weak leaders lack self-control. They lack self-control. Hence, they fall into the traps of money, sex, lack of time management, troubles in their relationships, lack of diligence in studies, Self-control is the root of all evils in leadership. And is the root of all problems of weak leaders. So you could read from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10 to 28. You will see the example of Saul. It's an example and an epitome of a weak leader. And uh, I don't think we should be such. (laughs) <laughs> I, I just rushed through all those points because we have uh, yeah, we have wasted a lot I mean we have spent a lot of time in the beginning so I hope you are blessed God bless